What's up guys, in this video we're going to build an overpowered Windows XP system with a way too new and unsupported Intel Skylake CPU to try to play Crisis and other games at high FPS's. The body and soul of this build of course are the motherboard and CPU. Originally I built this PC for eSports in 2015 and it was massively used by the owner that eventually upgraded in 2020 and now the parts are here for something different. The motherboard we're using is an Asus H170M+, Plus. it has tons of features of which most we aren't going to use for this Windows XP build and the 1151 socket that brings us to the CPU. The CPU is an Intel i5-6400 from 2015. It has 4 fast cores with no hyper threading with a turbo boost frequency of 3.3 MHz should be quite enough for all our XP games. It also has 6 MB of cache and it supports DDR4 at up to 2133 MHz which is way more than what was used back in the 2000s for Windows XP. It also has an onboard GPU, an Intel 530 that could actually run some retro games but we're going with something a bit more powerful than that. So this is the latest video card supported officially by Windows XP, the GeForce GTX 960. Like the CPU, this video card is also from 2015 and the core clock boosts up to 1178MHz while the 2GB of GDDR5 memory run at 1753 This one being the Asus Trix version gets a meaningless boost of 10%. Not a real difference in games, but the cooling on this card is superb. Speaking of superb, we get to the RAM memory we're using that is the complete opposite of superb. It's just some lackluster memory left over from upgrades, it's 16GB of unmatched DIMMs of which we're only using 3.25, that is what Windows XP 32-bit can use. Nevertheless, we'll still use both sticks, hopefully to achieve some dual channel. For the sound card, we're going to use this Audigy, except we're not, because this motherboard doesn't have a regular PCI slot, so yeah, onboard sound it is, and let's hope to god we can find a Windows XP driver for it. For storage, we're going with a brand new 240GB SSD, yes there's an issue here, Windows XP doesn't do trim, but this is not a daily use PC, and apparently from Kingston's website, this SSD can deal with XP's garbage collection system. SSDs are made of NAND memory chips, and there's a limited amount of times you can record to those chips, so the trim command helps distribute the data evenly so a part of your SSD doesn't die sooner than the other, so it's nice but not a big issue on PCs that are not constantly used. PSU is another lackluster but 80 plus bronze piece of thing that will do the job here in the case. The case is the NZXT Silent Case. Well, it's actually called Lexa, but I think that's a misnaming opportunity there by NZXT. For cooling, I got this new generic Intel cooler here, but I've realized it doesn't have the copper core, it's light and feels cheap, so one little adjustment I'm doing is swapping the heatsink from an Intel cooler with the copper core. Since I have this original Intel cooler and one of the fixtures is broken, it's a perfect candidate for the transplant. The heatsink is a bit dirty, I'll use magic to clean it like usual. And it's done, brand new cooler. So of course we must test this thing outside of the case, building things directly into the case always jinx the build, besides if a certain part doesn't work with a certain old operating system, we can swap it before inserting it into the case and that will save time. Alright, things are roughly together and we're using a 1680x1050 monitor, which I think is totally underrated, I enjoy the extra vertical space of the 16x10 aspect ratio, besides having 300,000 less pixels than a full HD will help us achieve the 150 FPS in crisis, which is of course the minimum necessary. So system turns on and incidentally now we have to deal with the most scary part of this whole build which is installing an OS from 2001 and a machine from the future year of 2015. If you try to just slot an installation CD in, you immediately as the process begin get a blue screen that does warn you of what to do by pressing F7 and ignoring some BS introduced with newer hardware. Does this fix anything? No, the main problem here is a HCI, which is a protocol for communicating with the SATA controller and Windows XP doesn't know what to do with that. Its original installer included no way of interpreting that, so we need to find a workaround. 
Something that I thought would work is the easy to boot software because it preloads drivers and there's all sorts of custom things you can do to it, but after trying to make the install go through 200 times and exhausting everything I could do, I moved to another method. So I found another method in the overclockers forum and it's much more direct. You need software from Asus to customize the flash drive. Then all you need to do is copy the XP ISO into the flash drive and the drivers. And the thread kindly refers to another forum where you can find those files. So finally, I got through the installation process. So go ahead and throw in the comment section right now what games you would like to see running on this OP Windows XP system for the second part of this build next week when it will get a case and we're testing out games in the latest officially supported video card for Windows XP, the GTX 960, and a completely overpowered and unsupported CPU, the Skylake i5-6400. And if you enjoyed this video, check out the original 2008 build of the NZXT Cylon case in the video here. I really need to learn how to do something about this hair.